There have been a fair few bad or underwhelming teams in Formula 1 history. Names like Pacific, Colony, Zack Speed and Manor more recently spring to mind. But few teams in F1 history have been as uncompromisingly catastrophic as a 1997 team known as Mastercard Lola. Lola, a name that to many motorsport fans will most likely ring a bell. For me personally, it conjures up images of the ungodly Lola T70 and the gorgeous Aston Martin B0960. It's also worth mentioning that Lola has one of the most impressive resumes of any company in motorsports history. Just look at some of the cars they had a hand in creating. The aforementioned T70, the Nissan R90CK, the Lola T500 that won in the 1987, the T90 that won in the 500 for Ari Leyendijk and the Honda RA300. But this disastrous year in Formula 1 is one they would prefer to leave off their resume. So what happened to make this such a bad year? Well, it's thanks in large part to the team's sponsor, Mastercard. You see, Lola never wanted to enter the 1997 season. The team's original plan was to enter in 1998. This would be a good year to step in as a rule shakeup would make it easier to build a competitive car. But Mastercard wasn't going to play that game. The credit card giant pressured Lola into entering the 1997 season instead. This left Lola with only a very short amount of time to design and build a new car. In just a few short weeks, Lola came up with a car mostly based on all the IndyCar designs and powered by a Ford V8. And because the short design time left barely any time for testing, anyone without red and yellow circles in the logo could see that the people involved were going to be in for a bad time. Nevertheless, the T9730 was finished in time for the season opener in Australia. Brought in to pilot the doomed machines for Formula 3000 champion Vincenzo Suspiri and former footwork driver Ricardo Rosset. While Suspiri was talented and showed some promise, the more experienced Rosset lacked so much pace he probably wouldn't have even won the, the karting race at his friend's birthday party. Now at this point, it's important we talk about the 100 and 7% rule. The 107% rule is a rule in qualifying that states that in order to qualify for a race, any driver's time must be within 107% of the time set by the driver on pole position. Pole position for the 1997 Australian Grand Prix went to Canadian Jacques Villeneuve, who posted a time of 129,369. That meant that to be allowed to start, any driver must be within that 107% limit. That meant a time of 135.625. Surely Suspiri and Rossit would never take pole position, but 6 seconds would be enough, right? Well, no. Not really. Because the car had not enough downfalls and far too much drag, neither driver got even close to a good time. Suspiri's fastest lap came in at 149.72, while Rosset, the more experienced driver, remember, managed 142.086. That's 11.6 and 12.7 seconds off the pace, respectively. After an embarrassing showing at Albert Park, the team headed for Brazil for round two of the championship at Interlagos, but the cars never even exited the pit box there. Mastercard, apparently still not understanding that rushing into Formula 1 is never a good idea, was furious with how events had unfolded in Australia. Not seeing their own role in this whole disaster, the company pulled their support, leaving the team without a sponsor and without money as the other sponsors soon followed Mastercard's example. The two cars sat in the garage for the duration of the weekend but were later pulled from the championship. Lola would never compete in Formula 1 again. An ambitious effort by the company for 1998 was completely ruined by corporate influence as Mastercard demanded the team to enter early, essentially dooming the team in the process. And yet company bigwigs never seemed to understand that this likely wouldn't have happened if the team had ended in 98, as it was supposed to, and when things went south, they bailed. It's a fascinating story, and it remains one of the biggest disasters Formula 1 has ever seen.